Okay, so as you saw with the PVA print, there was a lot of stringing on it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the PVA had not been dried properly before use and it had soaked up a lot of moisture over the printing time that was shown. Now that said, it is easy to remedy using a food dehydrator, although it is recommended that you do not get it very damp in the first place as it can supposedly change the molecular structure of it, blah, 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 blah. In general, trying to keep it dry is not a bad thing. A food dehydrator is not very expensive on Amazon, and if you're going to print any kind of moisture-sensitive filaments, they're a great investment to have. I've got an upcoming video on how to modify one, but we'll get to that when the time comes. Now, focusing on the print itself, you will notice that I use straight PVA supports all the way up for the support material. This is because I am not very familiar with Kira, and I did not realize that there was an interface support material setting. Now that I know about that, in the future I would definitely do that, although there are times where the model is so delicate, it's just better to print with straight support material and sacrifice that little extra bit to be able to dunk it in a bath of water and have it soak away. Now for the soaking it in water and floating it away part, you definitely want the water to be warm versus room temperature or even cool. Cool water doesn't really do anything, lukewarm water does something, but water around 40 to 45 degrees C, especially if it's slightly circulating, makes this stuff vanish crazy fast. Do note that depending upon how much you have in there, you might have to change the water out partway through, or take the print and rinse it off under water when you are done. Now I've seen some people use what's called a sous vide cooker, which is a combination of a heater and a little circulation unit find them for not very expensive online, or you might even find one used at your local thrift store. They might be worth looking into as they are a cheap and easy option to keep the water at a set temperature and circulating so you can remove all that lovely support material as quickly as possible. Now, a couple of other things to keep in mind with PVA is it does not like sitting in a hot end for an extended period of time at an elevated temperature. Now, the stuff that's on the market now has been modified so it can sit at temperature longer without burning, but if it's gonna be sitting in there for an extended period of time, definitely program in for your nozzle temperature to go down. I would say somewhere around 120 to 150 if it's gonna sit for a long time is not a bad idea. Yes, this will take more time on the print to bring it back up to temperature, but it's still faster than dealing with a totally gummed up nozzle, in my opinion, and or a dead print. Neither of those is very fun. Now, one last thing to keep in mind with this material is it's definitely soft. Keep that in mind for both running it through the printer. So make sure that your tension is set right, your nozzle's clean, your temperature's right, your print speed's not too high. And also keep that in mind for the support material itself. If you're going to be doing very long, tall, spindly supports, either up the support density in that area or run the material that you're printing with as the support material and then use the PVA as an interface layer. You can adjust the thickness so you could have say maybe two millimeters of PVA to make it very easy to remove that support but it's going to stay stable. So let's jump over to poly support and talk about that.
Okay, as for poly support, this material is a little bit more unique. It is not water soluble, but it is designed to be broken away from the print. Now, this does have some advantages because it is stiffer than PVA. And one of the drawbacks is you definitely have to be more careful when you are removing the supports because you can still damage the model. Now that being said, I found poly support very easy to print with on the machine. It pretty much went in there. It does like to run a bit on the hot side. Polymaker recommends between 220 to 235 C and that's not a joke. If you don't get this stuff hot enough, it will not flow properly. Now that said, usually I shoot for about the middle, 225 to 230, gave good results. Do print on the slower side with this material as well though, so that way it really can you know, build up on there nicely. But this stuff peels right off from PLA. I was absolutely amazed by it. So definitely try and keep it as dry as possible. It is not as moisture sensitive as straight PVA though, but as always, to keep things clean, it's best to keep it as dry as possible. Now, one other thing to keep in mind with this is it does work good as an interface support material as well. You just have to be more careful though when you are removing the supports if it's a delicate model, because you obviously need to break away what is currently there, that is the material that you printed in, and then you can just peel off the poly support, leaving behind some very nice surfaces. Now, as for running it in the machine, nothing really to report. I don't think it needs as dramatic of a temperature drop as straight PVA does, being it is a PLA PVA blend, and it does claim to have some additives that prevent it from burning. So overall, I would say it works pretty darn good as well on the machine. So I can hear you guys in the comments probably going, well, Calvin, which one is best for my application? And honestly, that's a decision that you have to make. Ideally, if you can afford it, I would say get a roll of PVA, get a roll of breakaway support material. Whatever brands you decide to choose is totally up to you. But that being said, if you find yourself leaning towards doing more delicate models, I would say go with the PVA. That way you can soak the stuff away. It is a little bit trickier to work with, but soaking it away is really, really nice. If you find yourself leaning towards, I'm doing big, chunky models that need support material, and I can easily break it away, then I would say go get the poly support or any other breakaway support material. That's going to be your best bet. That said, like anything, figure out what your intended use cases are. And in my case, I see uses for both of those. Being I already had them, it kind of makes sense. But as with anything, just do your research, figure out which one is probably going to suit you best, and then go from there. Hope you guys found this useful, and I'll see you here next time on Make It With Calvin.